Hey, this is the other question I've been getting so many times from people about this strange and unique looping mechanism as described by Terrence on Joe Rogan's podcast. And I'd just like to explain a little analysis related to this. All right. So is the square root of two not correct, potentially? I just showed in the last video that the square root of two right, is 1.4142 in the spiral of Theodorus and also showed that and demonstrated that all musical notes, therefore all light and all sound is based off of 1.4142 being the actual square root of two. So if it's not, then literally all things would cease to exist. But what about this strange looping mechanism that was talked about on Joe Rogan's podcast? Is the square root of two creating a strange and unique looping mechanism or phenomenon? So let's look at this. So what was asserted is that the square root of two, if it's 1.414213562237, is then cubed right here, taken to the third power. It equals 2.828427124746619, which is actually equal to the square root of eight as well. So this then, if we divide it by two, the original two that we started with from the square root function, comes out to the original value of 1.414213562237. So this looks like something is something totally unique potentially, right? So, but let's dig a little bit deeper into this to understand exactly what's going on here. So let's take it to my computer so you can see this. And I'll just re repeat the same function. Make sure, Jason, you can see this really close up as well. Okay? So this is my trusty polymath calculator, which you can see I actually created the largest number calculator, right, that exists in the world. And this is actually broken down into arithmetic, which is number and abstract, number and space for geometry, number and time for music, and number and space and time for cosmology. It's actually like the quadrivium. Pretty cool, right? And it's actually got a lot of mathematical discovery embedded within it. And it's its own self-evident proof. And I'll show you the other things this can do potentially at the end. So let's start with the square root of two. So we take the square root function. You can see the word square root right here. 1.4142, okay? Now we're gonna take this, just as Terrence said, to the third power. And now we're gonna divide it by the number two, and that gives us the square root of two. So if I square it, it comes back to two, right? And it's two perfectly all the way out. So I can go all the way with this. Doesn't matter how many digits, right? We've got a version of this that has 2.8 billion digits of accuracy. And this one for speed gives us 30,000 digits instantly. Okay. So let's see if other numbers have this same characteristic when we cube it. Okay, so now make sure we're close up again. So now let's take the number three and see if the exact same phenomenon happens or not. So we're gonna start with the square root of three, 1.732050807. And now we're going to cube that and that equals 5.1961524. Now we're gonna divide that by the same number we started with, just like we did with the square root of two. We're gonna divide it by three and see if it comes out to the square root of three. Oh, it does. It's the square root of three. If we square this, it's three. So what if we do this with the number four and taking the square root of four? So the square root of four equals two. We take it to the third power, which equals eight. And now we're gonna divide it by four. That was the number we started with. And it equals two, which is the square root of four. Wait, okay, let's do the square root of five and see if the same thing happens. Square root of five equals 2.2360679977. Now we take that to the third power and divide it by five. And let's see if we get the square root of five. 2.2360679. We square that, it's five. Let's try it for six. So we're gonna take the square root of six, take it to the third power, then divide it by six, 
that equals 2.449, which if I square it, comes out to six. I could keep going with this. The square root is seven. 2.64575. Take it to the third power, then divide it by seven, and it equals the square root of seven. Square that to check it, and it's correct. So wait a minute, this is inherent. Now you can pull back. Every single number will do this when you cube it, without exception. When you cube a number and then take the original number that you started with, so if it's n, right, and you've basically taken the square root for that value, that is a value, and then you divide it, right, by the result, by the same number of times, so square root of two, then divided by two after you've cubed it, is gonna end up with the exact same result that you started with. This is an inherency to all numbers in the entire universe. There's no exception to this. So it is not at all unique for the square root of two. Now, I wanna show you what else this cool calculator can do. Because we created this and it also has every major math constant, the fine structure constant, Wien's displacement, Euler Mascheroni, Feigenbaum, right? Permittivity of free space, Riemann zeta function, literally everything. And then we go to the next function, we go to the, the uh, capital letters of the Greek alphabet, giving us all these different gravitational constant, you know, so I could take this, and this gives me the gravitational constant. Then if I take this, I can also find the fine structure constant. There you go. How nice, we can actually find this all in one calculator play. So if you zoom out a little bit, so now you can see also that we can even do all of this in digital root. We can do programming, we can even do cryptography with this calculator that we created. So in the digital root calculator, I can put in any number here and have it reduced to its digital root, which brings it down to a single digit, three. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So then we can also go to, you know, some basic information about digital roots and how it works. So all the stuff from my book, Philomath and Polymath and everything is embedded in this as well. We can even look at dimensions. We can look at right triangles. So I, I'm tired of using all these different triangles and, and all these different calculators, excuse me. And, and so I decided to combine them all into one calculator. And Wolfram Alpha didn't do it for me because it was too slow for large numbers. So from this, I can create right triangle relationships, even find the sum, product, and difference. So I can even see what a right triangle would be formed when I look at two numbers that could be added and multiplied together. And so here we have it. This is a right triangle, and all you have to do is take the hypotenuse minus the base. So C minus B and C plus B equals the two numbers that were the beginning numbers, which are um, 89 and 137. So factorization is inherent to the right triangle. We actually built this into a triangle calculator. We can also do spiral calculations, and we could say, okay, let's look at a side of two and a side of one and calculate what that right triangle would look like. And if we turn it into a spiral, we can actually make it spiral out like this. That's kind of cool. And then we can turn it into a fan as well. So let's take three and one this time, or three and two. You can turn it into this fan that goes around just like this. That's pretty cool as well. We've even figured out the calculations for left triangles. So if we have a height of 10 and a base of 12, then it's gonna look like this. And the left and right triangles will be like this, and this will be the proportions of the left triangles. Actually, yes, there are left triangles, strangely enough. And here are all the proportions of that. All the formulas are found right in here so that anyone can go and check this. This is called the Polymath Calculator. It's part of Orion platform. We also have, in addition to that, um, as well, you can make polygons. So we can make polygon calculator and calculate the number of sides. So let's say we want to see a 12 side and we have one for each value side. And so this is basically giving us the polygon 
that would be related to that 12-sided. And it's going to give us the number of sides, the interior angle, the exterior angle, the apothem as well. And in addition, we can look at even the flower of life. This is kind of cool. So we can create flowers of life from this also and do normal packing on this. So the number of circles I want to put here is 61. So now I've got a flower of life pattern that's creating this inner and outer circle relationship. And in addition, I can look at basic things like the seed of life, right? And the flower of life and, uh, and hexagonal packing of it. So number of circles, 271. This is basically giving us a much larger version of this. And you can look at all the different options of this, swap the colors, you could do all kinds of stuff with this. It's, it's very, very cool. The Flower of Life Generator, now I'm gonna put, uh, put 61 circles on this. There you go. So I can make any number of Flower of Life. There's still a bug in this that's still basically giving us ex some sort of overlap there, but it's, it's gonna be rectified very soon. And then um, in the third dimension, we can also create polyhedra. Look at this. This is pretty cool. So here's your tetrahedron, all the platonic solids, the cube, the octahedron, the dodecahedron, the icosahedron, Archimedean solids, the truncated tetrahedron, the truncated cube. And we're actually going to put in here all of Michael Evans' work related to the inner structure of Flower of Life. So the tetratrine, right, the dodecatrine, all of these things are all going to be embedded within this. And um, I, I love that work because I think it's really cool. And so you can see this again. Have a look at this. So this is the snub cuboctahedron, the icosi dodeca. So if you're wondering how to find all these things, uh, you could actually find them all on the polymath calculator, which is pretty, pretty awesome. The dodecahedron right here. And this works also on iPhones, uh, which is great. Even the Johnson solids are in this. So you can actually see all of this and we'll soon be putting in all of the other inverted geometries as well. Um, you know, like the uh, dodecatrine and the icosatrine and all of those. We even have higher dimension. And then you can even make conversions into music for all of this through Fourier transforms. And all the musical tunings will be in there, including precise temperament tuning, Pythagorean tuning, equal temperament. We're not entirely finished with all of it. And then cosmology, which will include even zodiac and planetary influences, birth charts and historical astrology and numerology. This is an exciting platform because this is basically taking the quadrivium and applying it across the board to a unified mathematics. And that's really exciting. But in conclusion, there's nothing special with the square root of two looping related to cubing and then dividing it by the same number that you took as your original square root value. That will always, 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 without exception, result in this same strange, but not so strange, looping mechanism that was talked about during Joe Rogan's podcast with Terrence Howard, who also I have a great deal of respect for. I like him a lot. I like the work that he's doing as well. And I think it's great that he's for forcing us in a way to challenge all of these questions to challenge all of our assumptions. I applaud his effort in doing that. But, uh, you know, I also want to make sure that we have clarity around this. And if I'm getting a lot of questions, I'm not going to not tell the truth based on what I know to be correct as well. And math is math is math. That's the one, one of the things I love about math. Having said all of that, the beauty of our world is that we have this mathematical underpinning to all of it. And it's literally pushing us to all see that there is a divine creator at the basis of all of it. And I just gave a speech at the Vatican uh, last week where I had to give a, a speech to prove the existence of a divine creator and divine architect through mathematics. And I did that starting off with zero to the power of zero equals one. And it's not just zero to the power of zero equals one because someone said, oh, anything to the power of zero equals one. I'm gonna show you something here. Now, this is obviously kind of unique because zero is supposed to have no value at all, right? So if I were to take 0 0.5 and I took it to the power of 0 
whoops, let me put zero again, 0 0.5 to the power of 0 0.5 equals 0 0.707. There it is, 0 0.707. But now if I take 0 0.05, so I'm getting smaller, closer to 0 to the power of 0, to the power of point, or 0 0.05, point zero five equals a larger number, point eight six. So then zero point zero zero five, getting closer to zero again, to the power of zero point zero zero five. Point nine seven. So let's say I take point zero 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 five five zeros to the power of point zero zero oh I do that again zero point zero 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 five to the power of zero point zero 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 again five zeros five equals point nine 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 three eight nine so now if I take 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 5, to the power of 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 5, Point nine 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 seven six five. Now you could say, well, that's an approximation, Robert. Well, as you approach zero, then that value becomes one. And there's already mathematical proofs written that demonstrate by Leonard Euler and many other mathematicians that zero to the power of zero is not an undefined number. It is actually one because point nine 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 repeating is equal to one and you can find videos about this proving exactly this point on number file which i highly recommend on youtube i hope you guys uh enjoyed this and that you learned something and got something out of it today thanks very much